So what I'm about to share is some pretty exciting stuff. I'm not only gonna go over my new results for my 40 to 100 mile per hour pull, which the results are actually very impressive. If you saw my first rendition of this you know, test, I used Track Day, who's another YouTuber. He did a stock verse phase two test on your compulsion with his automatic 124 barth, and mine was kind of sitting in between. And this time I got pretty damn close to his phase two numbers with my phase one tune. So in that first video, you probably remember if you've seen it, I said that I'm definitely going to do the test again. And I said the results 100% should be better the second time around in better road conditions because those road conditions were terrible the first time. So we're going to be diving deep into the road conditions, variables, how, collecting performance data, how the car reacts to all this type of stuff. So if you're into modifying cars, I highly suggest you watch this entire video straight through. I know I learned a lot going through this, just diving deeper and deeper into this. I'm gonna be sharing that knowledge that I gained with you guys. Hopefully you guys find it useful as well. There are a lot of other variables that some people like to bring in. Like, uh, for example, I'm using 93 octane. I always use 93 octane. Different gas stations, that could do something. You know, uh, oh, your oil, you know, you know, your oil wore more. So that's gonna, you know, not make your test valid. Your tire pressure, your tires, is it, you got more wear in your tires, that's different. Again, these are minuscule. These things are so small. What I'm sharing are the variables and stuff that make a huge impact on performance data testing. This is my opinion. I'm always learning different stuff. This is my opinion and my input and my take on this type of testing. So hopefully you guys will start doing more tests as well. I would love to see other people start doing testing data like this using the draggy, you know, that's what I use or whatever you guys use. And hopefully we can get more people doing testing data, try to be as accurate as possible. So a lot of time and effort goes into collecting the data, producing these results, analyzing everything and kind of just putting it together. So if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, comment below, head over to drivendistrict.com if you want to pick up some merch. Don't forget, smoke tires, not drugs. Let's head into the results. All right, so first, real quick, we're gonna be comparing the results from my old video showing track days phase two versus my phase one. Now, I did not do a side-by-side -side comparison and I wanted to show this real quick before we dive in because I analyzed it more and I was able to break it down even better. So real quick, let's just watch this once through. On the left is track day phase two. On the right is my first run for my first video phase one with the terrible conditions. And most importantly, I synced up both videos to start at 40. You can see right there, they're both at 40 basically. So let's keep going. Right there, he's at about 100. I'm at, I don't know, below 95 it looks like. But there's a reason for this. We're going to analyze this a little bit more. This is from my first run again, the 13.98 in terrible conditions, which I said in that video, you guys probably remember, I'm 100% I'm gonna be redoing this run. It's most likely gonna be faster. It has to be faster because the conditions were terrible and my slope is at a huge increase of 1.66%. I went over how it increased later in the video too. Let's dive in a little closer to this. Basically, this is 65. This is 97.5. Let's just say 95 to make things easy. I added two lines. To my eyes, they look kind of even at 65 and this one is a 75 and an 85, those two red lines. So from like right below, just, just so you know, the green line is the slope, the blue line is the speed. So 65, a little before 65, right around here, if we go down, let's just say it's about 60 miles an hour when the slope started to go up. At 75, they coincidentally cross and it's still going up from 60 to 75. From 75 to oh, this again, is 85 so in the red and this blue cross that's an 85 to about 85 because if we just go up that's when this slope starts to kind of flatten out so between 60 to like 80 85 is where my slope was at its worst so if we go look at that video real quick again let's see what happens now that we know this from 40 to 60 i was pretty flat so let's see what happens Wouldn't you look at that? We're almost dead even from 40 to 60. And now what's gonna happen from 60 to 85? He gets a good like five, yeah, more, six miles an hour on me. 
and then it starts to even out a little bit for me. So just from that, 40 to 60, everything was even. 60 to 85, he gets an extra six miles an hour on me. And now I'm gonna go until he goes to 100. And I'm slowly, ever so slightly catching up, but he's still obviously ahead of me. But now you get to see from 40 to 60, we were pretty neck and neck, you know what I mean? That was on the low end when things were still kind of flat. And now he got a huge lead against me because of that big slope increase. So that's something new that I dove into. I want to share that with you guys. Hopefully you guys understand that. We're going to dive into it even more. Let's go look at the next run where we did the 40 to 100 in optimal conditions. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you guys, luckily I remembered to put the Draggy video on. Another cool feature about the Draggy is you can record your run through the Draggy app itself. And it gives you this cool screen with all this information. So I have the Draggy time slip, which I'm going to share later. And right now we're going to watch this. It's pretty neat. I'll leave it on here for you guys. Run through it real quick. Here we go. 50. Why don't you head over to drivendistrict.com and pick up a Do You Even Shift shirt? Don't drive a manual? Don't worry about it. Enjoy boost? Smoke tires, not drugs? We got you covered. Mugs, shirts, everything. Support the channel. Head over there. Get yourself some gear. So that was the onboard, so to say, video with the Draggy. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to put this in here real quick. I was not flat foot shifting or wide open throttle shifting or however you guys want to refer to it. It was a full regular off throttle shift. I tried to do it as quick as I could. I think it was pretty nice actually. This video will just kind of show that. You'll be able to see up here that the tack does not jump whatsoever in between shifts showing that I did not have any throttle in between shifts. So I had it in sport mode, as you can see. I left traction control on, I had it on the first time. Now the first time temperatures were ridiculous. I was spinning in second gear regardless, so I had to leave it on just for safety and I felt better leaving it on. This time I probably could have taken it off, but whatever, it was on. We still got some good results. So these are now the new results from the new run on the Draggy. Not showing you the time yet. We're gonna get into that a little bit later. I wanna really dive into the details first. If anyone knows why this is a little jagged, you can let me know in the comments below. I had a suction cup with the draggy holding on to the you know side window or whatever, so maybe it shook a little bit. I don't know. So let's go over the results here. What I really want to cover is if you notice from the beginning, up until about 60, give or take, it's flat. Just like in this is the first run. From the beginning to about 60, give or take at the 65 marker, this gray line, it's flat. The old one starts to go up. The new one starts to go up right here is the 75 marker you can see the blue speed line crosses it at 75 is when this one starts to go down not into a negative slope but just starts to go down and even out not as much as a hill not as much of a slope so keep that in mind between the 40 to about 75 ish a little before give or take they are pretty similar you know as far as the slope goes i would imagine so let's go ahead and watch what happens. I have all three on screen at this point, all right? We already went over these two. This is the new one right here. So now most importantly, again, they all start off at 40. As you can see, we're gonna move it a hair before we'll hit play and see what happens. At 60, they're almost all neck and neck. The first two were already fairly close and now the new one of my first run and my second run are basically dead even. They're super, super close. Upwards of 75, they're still extremely close, showing the power was there the whole entire time. But now is when my first run starts to get an inclined slope to a pretty hefty amount compared to my second run, which starts to kind of even out to a more flat slope. So let's see what happens going all the way up to 100. I'll stop when track day hits 100, because at the end of the day, he is the fastest of these three, and we can see where the other ones stand. So right around there, track to hits 100. Take a look at my phase one run on the side here. 
few miles per hour before, but look at the phase one first run, so much more behind. So that just goes to show how much the road slope and all these other variables come into consideration. That first run, I kind of said in between, now it makes sense. This going through it and kind of looking through, it makes sense why my second run of phase one was almost neck and neck with the phase two. And when I show you the numbers, you're gonna be like, wow, that was really damn close. So here it is again on screen. This was the slip to this, this was the slip to this. We can see how from 60, I'm just gonna drag this. They're almost neck and neck going to 60. Why? Because this goes up to 60. Well, 60 is right there. It is kind of like, they're kind of flat, kind of flat. Upwards to 75. Again, they all go on an incline. And that's why I, both of them hit 75 at the same time here, but he's already started to gain because both of these are inclining. And then this one goes even crazier of an incline where this one starts to settle out a little bit. And that's where you see the right run starting now to pick up even more and kind of close the gap on track day while the first run of mine is kind of falling back a little bit. Last, last thing I wanna show you is the shifting problem. So let me actually turn off this one. My third to fourth shift, surprisingly the second to third wasn't as noticeable, but my third to fourth shift, which happens at around 75 miles an hour, you're gonna see a huge delay right after the shift. Not the shift itself, the shift was quick, enough, you know what I mean? But right after sh the shift, there's gonna be a delay with the speedometer. Probably because like I said, it was freezing cold out, it was wet out, I had traction on, it probably kicked in a little bit, but watch it, you'll see it and you'll, you'll hear it as well. You saw that right after the shift. Right there, you just pause for a little bit. Now let's compare it to this one, which the temperature and conditions were so much better. I didn't have to worry about traction issues. Let's see what happens when I do that same shift in the same spot at 75 miles an hour. You see how smooth and fluid that thing goes? It just shifts and keeps climbing nice and smooth. So that alone also helped the second run pick up on the higher end where the first run phase one kind of slowed down from that 80 to 100, you know what I mean? So the results, what everyone's been waiting for. So keep in mind, track day ran his phase two at 11.81. What did I get with my phase one? 11.94. Now that is impressive. That is extremely close to a phase two tune with me running it with my phase one. Here are the numbers side by side, just to kind of make it a little easier if you just want to look at it at one big quick spreadsheet type of thing. We have track day, stock 15.24 seconds, 40 to 100, do not know the temperature. His phase two, 11.81, his dash said 42 degrees. My first run phase one, 13.98, 36 degrees, although the conditions were bad, hence the asterisk. My second run phase one, 11.94, 41 degrees. So it was actually warmer that day. So the lower temperatures at 36 might have helped produce a little more power, but if you can't get that power down, then it just doesn't matter. So now we can clearly see why my second run was so much quicker than my first run. Everything's out there. We kind of literally almost mile per hour per mile per hour went through it and analyzed it to show why my run is 11.94. That is the true run and how my 13.98 could have been an 11.94 because in certain conditions, it was neck and neck with this run anyway. We get that now, we understand that. But what's still questionable is why or how can my phase one tuned car be almost just as quick as a phase two tuned car? So with that, I do have a few theories. I'm gonna go over them. I got about three theories behind it. You guys can comment below, let me know what you think. I'll kind of reach out to your compulsion possibly and see, but basically, Track day's test was done over two years ago. I think it was December, 2018. So over the years, I would imagine Euro Compulsion through their research and development and probably tuning, I don't know, hundreds of cars between the first iteration of that tune that he got over two years ago, they probably adjusted and dialed in their tunes to extract more power. I would imagine that and that 
could be one of the reasons why the car is very close to the older face too. They can come in and comment more on that. You know, the tuner, Toby, whoever, Brandon, they can say a little bit more on that if they want to. Now, another big difference between Track Day's car and my car is the exhaust. How much of a difference does it make? I don't know exactly, but I went with the Ragazon system initially because I wanted a valved system. But the cherry on top was that the full system is a 2.75 inch or 70 millimeters, which I think might be that sweet spot for this car. Most other systems, including what track they ran, are 2.5 inches. He had Goodwin Racing. I'm not 100% sure if he was running a downpipe or not. In his video, it says full cap back, whatever, I forget exactly. Uh, I heard he was running a downpipe, his video didn't list it, so I cannot say that. So that could be a difference as well. Three inch would probably be too big, losing too much back pressure on our car, but 2.75 might be a sweet spot. I don't know. Mine is 2.75 straight through. It's full from the downpipe all the way, you know, cross pipe, mid pipe, axle back, everything. And the last one would be the automatic versus manual. His is an automatic, mine is a manual. They're both 124 barth. I do not know much about the automatic transmission in the 124. I know the gearing is different. I saw track day was hitting like, I think close to 85 miles an hour in third gear, where when I was shifting, I was doing it at 75 miles an hour. If you guys have any other theories or ideas, go ahead, comment below, and let's chat about it. So in conclusion, I think this speaks volumes on the Euro Compulsion Phase 1 tune, as well as their other tunes. It's strong, it's consistent. I, I've had it on my car for about three months, and I'm not exaggerating here. I drive my car hard about 80% of the time. Cause I work from home. I don't drive much to be honest. So when I do, I enjoy the car. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the times I'm getting on it hard and I've never thrown a single code in those three months. I drive it hard consistently. Only once has it ever hit limp mode. Basically with the car had no boost whatsoever. The thing was like a turtle barely moved. I pulled over, turned it off, turned it back on, drove it, no issues, felt the boost, got on it hard again a couple minutes later perfect you know what i'm saying like after that no codes at all never had them anyway but i never went to lint mode again so i don't know what it was it must have been an isolated issue something just did it you know i pulled over checked all my hoses everything was good point is it's consistent it's strong so like i always say i have experience with your compulsion that's why i recommend them because i've done hard data testing i drive the car hard and i've never had issues with it so be sure to subscribe if you're interested in more data i'm going to be going up to phase two pretty soon, most likely the bigger turbo into the future. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, leave some comments, like it, all the good stuff, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.